Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Mustafa. Again, I will introduce myself. I'm Mustafa Farag from uh, Egypt, and, uh, and now I'm working uh, as an early stage researcher in a European project in Germany, University of Potsdam, or specifically Helmholtz Center uh, in uh, in Berlin, uh, in Potsdam. And what we do is uh, large scale flood risk modeling. And my, what I'm doing specifically is that I'm building uh, hydrodynamic models to stimulate floods uh, in all of Germany. And what I'm going to present now is was part of my work, uh, uh, was part of my master's thesis with Dr. Gerald Corso and uh, Professor Dim Dimitri Solmatin in uh, in IHE uh, two years ago. And it's not directly in machine learning, but it is in the way that how uh, the resembl resemblance with machine learning is is the way how we obtain the parameters uh, for hydrological model as we obtain it in uh, in uh, in machine learning or neural network. So at the beginning, I will start talking about uh, the conceptual models that we use. So for conceptual models, uh, it, we it provides a simplif uh, simplification of reality, and because of that, it only simulate uh, a small range. As, uh, a small range of, of the hydrological responses. So for the hydrograph, it's, it's uh, consisted of a lot of responses of the catchment and calibrating the model with, uh, uh, with one objective function is going to focus mainly on one part of the hydrograph. And uh, if you want to simulate it totally with a high uh, accuracy, uh, that will be a limitation of uh, calibrating the model with one objective function. So with different objective functions, you will have different hydrographs. And by addressing this limitation in, in the hydrological models, we we inter we we proposed a, a, a fuzzy committee concept to uh, calibrate the model based on not only one objective function, but uh, uh, based on a lot of uh, uh, multi-objective functions. So. As Gerald mentioned before, we 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 can cluster high flow or like we can divide the hydrograph instead of one one hydrograph we can divide it or cluster it into two uh, flow regimes high flow and low flow and uh, here in our, in our method we didn't make a hard partitioning so we didn't split the hydrograph into two parts but we made uh, the whole uh, the whole hydrograph it can be simulated with two models. And we built those two models by multi-objective optimization. And, and in this case, we used the non-dominated sorted genetic algorithm, NSGA2, and with two objective functions. And those two objective functions are uh, root mean square with two uh, with with two weights. And these weights are based on some uh, some functions. And by doing this calibration, this multi-objective calibration, we have two models. One simulate the peaks. And that's what we are interested in when we are uh, modeling floods and the other models simulate the low flow values in order to simulate droughts. And after we have two models or whatever we used multi objective, uh, how many objectives we used, we can have uh, more than two models, but here we only classify the flow. Uh, uh, into two two models only, so we have two models. After that, the problems come to come to how how can we um, combine? So we have now two uh, two hydrographs, and we only need one hydrograph to be as close as possible to the, the observations. And so that's the, the that's the second part of the methods, which is combining uh, combining these two hydrographs based on two uh, based on membership functions. So. So for the first part in the, the multi-objective optimization, so we have two objective functions with two, uh, with uh, which is uh, the the root mean square error, and by adding uh, a weight to each of these objectives, and and this uh, these weights are based on those uh, uh, those uh, uh, weighting schemes, which with which gives a weight to all the values of. Of the simulated hydrograph based on the, uh, the relative value of the discharge to the maximum value, and after calibrating the model based on those two objectives, we 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 come to the problem of how how can we combine both models 
how uh, how we can combine both models in order to have one hypergraph and by using this uh, membership function and here it, it is a trapezoidal function which gives here this is a low flow model and this is a high flow model so if the flow is lower than a certain value of discharge it the, the low flow model have the whole um, have the whole uh, uh, weight and if if the model is higher than uh, if the discharge is higher than a certain value the high flow model have have the whole weight so for this peak or discharge higher than uh, this value, we only going to we are going uh, only going to consider the, the the flow from the high flow model, and if the discharge is lower than this value, we are going to consider the flow from the low flow model, and the result. And in between, both models are going to be considered with a certain weight, and that's this area in the medium flow regime. And yeah, with the the model structure that we we have used is HBP model, so it is it is concept, lambda conceptual model, and it is based on uh, Lindstrom uh, 1997. It's very uh, simple model. Uh, uh, we scripted in, in Python, and we uh, in order to have it uh, as a distributed, we we have we have implemented a, a raster based distributed model where. Uh, each cell is a lambda conceptual model, and the, the discharge is routed directly with a max path function to to the outlet. So the total uh, the total hydrographic outlet is the summation of all the discharge from all of these cells. And the case study that we have used it is uh, Hibo River in uh, El Salvador. It's uh, 432 square kilometer, and it has it has a big lake which influences the the base flow from uh, for the hydrograph. And um, and we simulated the lake uh, separately uh, as a subcatchment in the HBV model. And the data that we we used was uh, hourly data, uh, hourly temperature, and, uh, precipitation temperature, and we have also hourly discharge at the outlet catchment. And to to test our our fuzzy committee concept, how how much it improves the model. Uh, yeah, here as you see, we have the lake, which simulated as one model, and the part of the catchment we were trying to explore how much the, res the resolution of uh, of the representation is going to affect the performance. So first we consider the whole this whole area as one model, and then we try to use uh, uh, the raster uh, the distributed model with different resolutions. So once we used uh, four kilometer, uh, each cell is four kilometer and two kilometer and uh, one kilometer and 500 meter, uh, and and yeah, by doing that, we were like increasing the number of models. So for single model, we have one model for the whole subcatchment, and yeah, the the complexity of of the system becomes increased a lot when we consider every single cell as a separate model, and that's the case here with the distributed. Uh, yeah, so this part of the catchment is represented by 32 model. Yeah, and for the result, yeah, here, here, uh, the figures uh, shows uh, in the x-axis here. Uh, these are some of the models, and the complexity increase from single model. So this is one model, as I show it here, and the number of model increases till it reaches 32 at 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 this model. So as you see here, uh, and that's the error. So the error here is was very high, and it improves improves more more you uh, more when you goes to this is the committee model which is this uh, using this fuzzy committee mo model to improve the uh, the simulation of the hydrograph so as you see here the, the performance improved a lot and all of this committee model has much better performance than uh, than using one only one model and yeah as you see also the performance did not increase as much as we wanted to be when we when we made the uh, the system is very complex and using 32 model instead of uh, here is uh, was uh, was 16 models to 32 and two models. So by increasing the complexity of the system, we didn't gain that much, and that's that's the model that has the best performance. And yeah, so. Also, we in order to assess how how good is all of these models, 
we use different metrics, so root mean square, and with these special weights to focus on low flow and high flow, and that's a nice top cliff. So as you see here, this is um, these metrics, the root mean square, the lower, the better. So here at, at the lower axis, these are the different, uh, the low value of root mean square high, and this is the low value of root mean square. These values are normalized in order to present all the metrics in one graph, and that's the maximum value. And for Nash soft cliff, the minimum is up here and the lower is up here. So yeah, to, yeah, to make all the good models in one side, so these are the good models. So it has low value of root mean square and high value of Nash. So, and yeah, by by grouping all of these models, we notice that all of these models are this uh, committee models. So those are are the ones that has the, the fuzzy committee as a concept to develop them. So those models are here. So all the committee models are much, much better than all the single models, which are those models. So, and yeah, using this multi-objective optimization, it it, uh, it result in a Pareto set of models. So all of these are all, every single dot of these models uh, is a result of the multi-objective optimization. And all of these models are good, in the, this, uh, in the front are good. And uh, by, uh, by using the multi-objective optimization, then combining this best model for low flow and combining this best model of high flow using the committee model, using these uh, different scenarios of committee models, we have those uh, uh, committee models here that are better than every single model. So yeah, the result at the end, we, 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 we uh, concluded that yeah, using this committee model to combine this model and this model, will result uh, result in an, a better model, model than any uh, single model. So the best model was uh, was this one, uh, which is Lambda not distributed, and using uh, those two scenarios of uh, membership function A and uh, waiting scheme. So, and yeah, for, for, for other models, for other models, as you see here, like all of them has a, a very good performance, but uh, the observations that we got Increasing the complexity and in, uh, using 32 model with each cell is 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 not as good as we thought it would be. So using uh, using a distributed model uh, might be beneficial, but don't increase the complexity of uh, of your system. And yes, so that's the end of my presentation. So I would be happy if anyone has a, a question. Thanks a lot, Mustafa. Uh, thanks for your presentation. We have a few questions for you that I'll just put up on your screen. Just now, people, you can uh, um, continue sending your questions and comments to Mustafa um, as he answers this first one. Question from Nabil Khorchani is, how did you combine HPV light model with Python? Yeah, so at the beginning, I had it in, in MATLAB and I, I wrote all of it in Python. And actually, uh, with Gerald, uh, we developed further the, the HPV and we made it as a distributed model. And now it is in uh, in GitHub, so it is publicly available for uh, free access for anyone. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I I guess I will write my GitHub so you can you can access it. It's, it's freely available in in, uh, in in Python and also in MATLAB and in, uh, in in GitHub. Okay, fantastic. As I put the uh, as uh, as I put for you the next question, could you please type the link to the GitHub uh, profile okay. of yours chat so people can access it? They might be interested. Okay. All right. Um, the next question is from Simon Shivalking, who asks, uh, says, very interesting. Could you please provide some examples of practical applications of the model as you visualize? Apart from what you started out with, uh, practical application. So that's a practical application. What I showed about this Hippo River. So uh, the main purpose of the model is that they wanted an uh, operational model, and time series was very small. So the calibration, uh, calibration with single model didn't 
didn't give uh, like the desired results. So that's why we were at the beginning exploring which methods help to improve the simulation of the hydrograph. So, uh, yeah, this case study is is, uh, is a practical uh, application. And uh, what's the other part of the question as you visualize? Yeah, like, uh, uh, what I suppose he meant to ask was, you know, practical applications of, of the model apart from the one that you uh, kind of started out with, apart from the one that you, uh, you know, do you see some other practical applications uh, of it? Do you think it's, for example, do you think it's relevant? It would be uh, relevant in some other regions as well. Uh, yeah, so that's not, not the only application that uh, has been implemented using this method. So uh, it, it was uh, originally started by uh, Dimitri Solomatin, my professor, and, and yeah, the, uh, they implemented in other catchment in, in Luxembourg and Italy in, in Europe. So, yeah, if you just uh, search it and uh, for for the publication of Dometri Solomatin or the method itself, you will find like two or three papers talking about uh, other catchments. Uh, we have received a question from uh, um, on Twitter, which is not about your particular presentation per se, but it's a more fundamental question. And I'm really uh, hoping you could respond to this. Uh, could you mm -hmm. please explain advantages of artificial intelligence or machine learning over simple data modeling or analysis? Like why make the machine learn? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, th th that's a hard question and it mainly depends on the purpose of the model. So you cannot say like this is better than this. And usually people go for machine learning models because uh, uh, it, it is faster, and uh, but it requires more data. And in some applications, um, it, uh, you, you cannot use it because it, it doesn't have uh, a physical uh, a meaning. So it, it just, you obtain it from, from the calibration of, or, or from the optimization. It's, it's a black box. So it doesn't have any uh, physical meaning at, at the background. Uh, for example, for, for some of the, one of the questions was, uh, Asking like about flood mitigation or scenarios about land use change, and for 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 this application, you are like forced to use uh, physical based models uh, rather than machine learning. So it it mainly depends on the purpose why you are building this model. Uh, uh, Daniel, if you're still connected with us, could you uh, could I please ask you to you know come in and uh, respond to this question because uh, it is. Uh, like a fundamental question and not only specific to um, the last presentation. If you're still with us, Daniel. Okay, so I will try to, to answer. Then I, I agree with uh, uh, Mustafa. It depends on, on the specific uh, practical case, you know. And also maybe uh, models that are based on ANMs or other kind of inter, um, artificial intelligence, they can be suitable for very complex processes that cannot be modeled with, with other models, right? So as it was said before, the, the AI model, it only analyzes the uh, inputs and outputs. So the complex process is, is hidden inside of a black box, black box and and it might be suitable for, for, for this very complex process as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Daniel, and also Mustafa. I'm afraid we'll have to end there because we are already 17 minutes over time. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, uh, thanks, uh, especially uh, Daniel, Mustafa, and of course, Gerald, who uh, has now logged out. Uh, thanks to you all, the audience, first of all, for you know turning up in good numbers. The recording of today's webinar will be available later today on the Water Channel at uh, thewaterchannel.tv slash webinars. Let me uh, put up the link over here. And uh, also the IAT website and newsletters and other channels of communication that you're well familiar with. Let me put up one of them over here. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, for now, I would just like to say thanks again and goodbye and uh, see you at the next webinar. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.